Why does everyone love Grim Jow Jager Jack? It's nothing new to say he's a popular character, but you'd be surprised to see just how many people really like his character. Go on YouTube and you'll see comments like, first time I ever rooted for a villain. At one point, people voted Grim Jow like the fourth best character just below Toshiro, Ichigo, and Rukia, and voted his fight against Ichigo as the third best fight in Bleach. And yet, it's not clear why people like him so much. Like, even this person who said they rooted for Grim Jow can't tell you why. It's weird because he's not an anti-hero. He's not even an anti-villain, like, say, Pain. All he really does is show up and fight everyone, and he has no problem murdering other people. So why is it that Grim Jow is such a likable character when he seems to lack any redeeming qualities? Well, part of it is something rather subtle, which is wild because I'm sure you don't look at Grim Jow and go, oh yeah, he's a subtle character. But it wasn't until recently when I took a closer look at his character that I realized he shares something very important in common with Aizen, namely his strong sense of pride and resentment for the status quo. It's easy to look at Aizen and think he's just an evil genius. But he shows time and time again that he's more than just a bad guy. I explained this more in my other video, but at his core, Aizen is motivated by his belief that to rely on the power of others is cowardice, and he aspires to destroy the system in order to create his idea of a better world. And while not as high level, Grim Jow's motivation is fundamentally the same. Grim Jow shows time and time again that he is driven by a desire to reaffirm his own own power and prove that nobody is better than he is. As a matter of fact, it's actually shocking just how much his backstory resembles Aizen's speeches about individuals and relying on others. In Chapter 284, we learn that Gillians are an amalgamation of Hollows that all want to eat each other, and that Adhuhas like Grimjow are born when one of the Hollows and a Gillian rises to the top to continue eating more Hollows. But we also learn that if an Adhuha fails to eat enough Hollows, they revert back to a Gillian and lose all individuality. So this story of Gillians and Adhuhas strongly resembles Aizen's philosophy because he speaks of the cowards that that rely on the power of others. In Grim Jow and other Edhuhas are figures motivated solely to continue hunting so that they can retain their individuality. He even makes what is basically a direct quote from Aizen. Aizen calls Urahara a coward for being complicit in the Soul King's status quo. And when the other Gillians give up on becoming Vasto Lordes, Grim Jow calls them cowards and says that they make him sick. So, like Aizen, Grim Jow is motivated by his strong sense of pride, his self-determination and individuality. Now, in this case, it's like the meme of flirting versus sexual harassment. With Aizen, it might sound nice on paper, but he's still a dick. Grim Jow is a villain as well, but with him, it's much more admirable because he doesn't go mass murdering people or conspiring to wipe out entire cities. But Grim Jow isn't exactly a good guy either. So, what's the difference? Why is it that the same basic philosophy makes Aizen a villain and Grim Jow more of just an antagonist? Well, before I say more on that, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, like I was saying, I think everyone will agree that while their philosophies are fundamentally the same, the big difference between Grim Jow and Aizen is how they practice those philosophies. Aizen may sound like a humanitarian on paper, but nothing is off limits with him. With Grim Jow, he doesn't seek destruction for the fun of it, and he doesn't claim to kill people in the name of justice. Grim Jow has a clear code of honor that is always rooted in his pride. It's funny because if you look through comments about Grim Jow, it's fairly common to see people compare him to Vegeta. And while I think they're far from identical, there's definitely a strong resemblance. With Vegeta, everything he does is about his Saiyan pride. The whole reason he lets Cell absorb 18 is because even though he's already beaten Cell, he wants to prove that he can beat Cell at his full power. And we see the same thing with Grim Jow. When Grim Jow confronts Ichigo in Hueco Mundo, he commands that Orihime heal Ichigo so that he can beat Ichigo at his full power. And it all stems from his motivation to prove that he is the strongest. And it's this same motivation that guides his code of honor. 
For example, when he saves Orihime, even when he has the chance to torture her to mess with Ichigo, it never even occurs to him. This shows that Grimjow isn't your typical villain that enjoys hurting others or destroying things just for the fun of it. His primary motivation is standing up for his sense of pride and proving that he is the strongest. As a matter of fact, out of all of the villains in Bleach, Grimjow probably has one of the lowest kill counts. The only characters that come to mind are the two hollow girls that attack Orihime, and I don't even think he technically killed them. And then he killed Lupi, the Iran car that took his place as number six. But notice the reasoning behind this. Remember, Grimjow is motivated by his pride. In this scene, not only does Grimjow have Orihime restore his lost arm, but he has her remove the scar covering his number six right before he kills Luffy, thus proving that he is the superior Espada. He doesn't kill Luffy for the fun of it, but rather to prove that he is the strongest character. And it's the same pride that helps Grimjow stand out from a character like Ulki Ora. It would be unfair to say that Grimjow has more charisma because that's not really what Ulki Ora is about. His whole is nihilism, so it's kind of hard to be an inspiring character when your whole vibe is everything sucks. At the same time, nobody doubts that Ulki Ora is a menacing character. And for that reason, it can be argued that Ulki Ora is a better villain than Grimjow. But remember, all the polls and internet discourse prove that the majority of fans like Grimjow over Ulki Ora. The reason for this is kind of like we talked about with Aizen. With Ulki Ora, he's in the story as more of a philosophical threat. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a powerful character, but his primary role is to test the beliefs of both Ichi and Orihime. With Grimjow, it isn't so much a psychological battle. There is an element of that in his fight, like when he questions Ichigo's motivation for the fight, but the reality is that Grimjow is primarily a physical obstacle placed in the story for Ichigo to train for and then overcome. For that reason, he's more charismatic as a character because he doesn't feel like a bad guy like Ulki Ora or Aizen. He feels like a rival like Vegeta, Mifune in Soul Eater, or Sagat in Street Fighter. All intimidating characters that fill the role of bad guy, but we sometimes find ourselves rooting for because of their strong code of honor and inspiring sense of pride. In fact, Grimjow reminds me of Sagat because both of them are scarred by the main characters of their respective stories. In Street Fighter, Sagat is known as the King of Muay Thai, but when he and Ryu fight in this open field in an epic battle, Ryu leaves a giant scar on Sagat when he lands the deciding attack. From that point on, that scar always reminds Sagat of the day he lost to Ryu. And as we know, the same thing happens to Grimjow. In their first fight, Ichigo lands an attack that scars Grimjow's chest. When Orihime is healing him, Grimjow deliberately chooses not to have this one scar healed, later explaining to Ichigo that he purposefully left it there as a symbol of his desire to beat Ichigo. As we've referenced before, Grimjow's sole purpose for this fight is to reclaim the pride that's been both literally and figuratively scarred by Ichigo. Prior to their previous fights, Grimjow had no doubt that he could beat anyone. He even challenges Oki Ora at one point, claiming that Oki Ora is scared to fight him. It's only when Ichigo lands an attack on him that he feels the need to prove himself. You can see this in the way he says that he hates how Ichigo looks down on him as if he's strong than him. As a matter of fact, when Ichigo asks if it bothers him that a mere human could challenge him, Grimjow responds by saying that he doesn't care who the other person is or whether they're a human, Shinigami, or Hollow. His only concern is that he proves he's the strongest. What this shows is that Grimjow doesn't care if you're Ichigo, Ulki Ora, or even someone like Tozen or Aizen. If you challenge his pride, he will stop at nothing to prove himself. It's this sense of pride and this constant desire to prove to himself just how strong he is that makes everyone love his character. And by following a character like Rimjow, it's easy to understand why he barely even feels like a villain, why it's so easy for him to be redeemed, and why he's given a warm welcome into the main group in the final battle against the Quincy's. With Grimjow, you learn that the secret to redeeming an antagonist isn't to completely change their character. Rather, it has to be a character that already possessed the tools or qualities to redeem themselves to the audience. And this is exactly what he does. 
He may come off as the cliched fighter character, but quickly proves that he is one of Bleach's best antagonists. His philosophy strongly resembles that of Aizen's own beliefs, but is unique in that it feels even more relatable. The reason for that is that Grimjow isn't an evil genius and he isn't looking for world domination. At his core, Grimjow is a character that resents relying on others, and is motivated by a sense of pride that makes him want to prove to everyone that he is the strongest. Because of this, it's easy to root for him whenever he's in the story. Which sounds weird, because obviously you want Ichigo to win, but you never want Grimjow to lose. Grimjow is a charismatic character who still gets comments on chapters of Bleach to this very day. And the secret to his charisma is one that's easy to overlook but is one of his most important qualities. It's because of this killer charisma that Grimjow will always be one of Bleach's favorite villains. But now I'd like to hear what you think. How would you describe Grimjow? How does he compare to other Bleach characters? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then check out that Aizen video I mentioned. In that video, I analyze Aizen's role as a rational villain. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.